Hello everybody, Ignatius L. Jackson CPA here with another exciting video for you. So today we're talking about an uh, interesting topic, a uh, hot topic lately, electric vehicle tax credits, okay? So both the personal side and the business side. So if that's something that interests you and you wanna learn some more, then stay tuned. If that's something that you don't care about, uh, then maybe you don't wanna listen in. Okay, but if you are interested in electric vehicle credits and wanna learn some of the rules, go ahead and stay tuned. We're gonna be right back in a second. And I'm gonna tell you all about it. All right, everybody, and we're back. Okay, so this video, again, is about electric vehicle tax credits, okay? These are credits that are gonna be available starting in 2023 tax year, and it goes through 2032 is when these credits are available, okay? Um, there's four different ways that you can actually access an electric vehicle credit. Uh, one of them you may not have actually thought of, okay? So the first way is you purchase an electric vehicle, okay? And you go ahead and claim the credit on your personal taxes, assuming you meet the thresholds, okay? The second way is you can lease an electric vehicle so the lessor claims it on their taxes and then passes on the cost to you as the lessee of the vehicle. The third way is you can purchase a used electric vehicle, so not a brand new electric vehicle, but a used one. And the fourth way is you can purchase an electric vehicle for business use um, in, your, in your business, okay? Which is called the commercial clean vehicle tax credit, okay? So let's, let's go through um, each of these items and kind of talk through them a little bit, okay? So uh, the, the, for the first one, so if you're gonna purchase an electric vehicle, all right, so you're just gonna go out there and buy a brand new electric vehicle, here's the rules that you need to understand and know in order to be able to qualify for a tax credit for purchasing said electric vehicle. So it used to be that as long as the manufacturer uh, was under the, the uh, car limit threshold, then you got the electric vehicle credit, okay? Well, now they changed it to where there's income limitations and all kind of other stuff, right? And so from that standpoint, if you don't meet these criteria, then you're basically not gonna get a credit for the vehicle, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, don't say I didn't tell you so. All right, so the first one is a modified adjusted gross income limit. And I'm gonna be reading some of this because I wanna make sure I say the right stuff here, so bear with me. So the modified adjusted gross income limit, okay? So that's gonna be $300,000 for joint filers or surviving spouses, okay? $225,000 for heads of household and $150,000 for single taxpayers or those that are married filing separately. Interesting to note, these are from fairly high thresholds, okay? So the cost of electric vehicles are still fairly high, right? Um, but there are some caps on the cost of the vehicle to get the credit, just FYI. So, you know, it's, it's interesting that this credit um, has such high thresholds, to be honest, for the um, electric vehicle, but they are, they, that is what they, Congress passed, okay? So again, 300,000 if you're joint, married filing joint, or surviving spouse tax return, 225,000 for head of household, and 150,000 for single taxpayers or taxpayers who file separately. Now, to determine your modified adjusted gross income, there's a number of things that go into that. So you work with your tax accountant, look at your previous year's tax return to kind of see what your modified AGI might be. Um, they can usually tell you if you're gonna qualify or not, or if you're kind of on that cusp of not qualifying and whether you wanna take that risk, because we don't really know, unfortunately, what our whole income is for the year until usually the end of the year. So you kind of take a little bit of a gamble. If you think you might be over these thresholds, you may not get the credit. And I've actually had some people who thought they were gonna get credit and didn't get the credit because they didn't talk to me in advance of buying the darn electric vehicle. <sighs> I don't know how many times I have to say this, people. Consult your tax accountant, your advisor, someone who understands the tax law before you go and do something that you think is going to provide you a tax incentive or advantage. Don't just go off what they tell you on freaking YouTube or TikTok or whatever, um, unless it's from someone who's actually giving you the actual guidance and the rules, So, which is what I'm doing here, okay? So listen in and make sure you kind of understand this, all right? 
So if you're not sure that you're going to be under those thresholds, then check with your tax professional before you go forward with buying an electric vehicle. Okay. Now, important to note, if a C corporation is buying the electric vehicle, these limits do not apply. Okay. Limits do not apply. They only apply um, uh, if you're doing like a Schedule C type business or if you're doing um, a, a partnership or something like that and it's flowing through to you personally, then these limits are still going to apply. Um, same thing with S corporations, these limits would technically apply unless you're considering it something called a commercial clean vehicle credit, which again happens on the in the fourth item that we're going to get to a little bit later. Okay, number two. So the first step is modified adjusted gross income. The second step to qualify for the credit is it must be purchased underneath a certain MSRP cap, which is the manufacturer suggested retail price is what MSRP stands for. Okay, so it has to be under a certain cap, which is $80,000 for vans, SUVs and pickup trucks. Okay. It is $55,000 for all other vehicles. All right. So as a result, basically the 80,000 MSRP limit is going to apply to small sport utility vehicles, standard sport utility vehicles, small pickup trucks, standard pickup trucks, minivans and vans. Okay. So it wouldn't apply to sedans or compact vehicles or cars, right? It's only going to be for um, those types of vehicles. So pickup trucks, minivans, vans, and sport utility vehicles. Okay. So that's $80,000 for those type of vehicles. Otherwise your limit is $55,000 MSRP. Important to note that MSRP is not what you're necessarily pay for the vehicle. Okay. You could pay lower than MSRP. You could pay higher than MSRP. That's just, that's the, the, what determines whether it's eligible or not for the credit is the MSRP on the vehicle. Um, important to note as well that there are a couple things that will fall into that 80,000 cap that may not necessarily, you may not necessarily think would fall into that 80,000 cap. And so one of those items that got classified as SUVs uh, or a few of those items I should say would be things like the Ford Mustang Mach-E, okay, the Ford Escape, PHEV, the Volkswagen Volkswagen ID4, and the Tesla Model Y. Okay, so those are four types of vehicles specifically that got called SUVs, even though they may not necessarily look like SUVs um, or necessarily be classified as SUVs ordinarily. And so you get the eighty thousand dollar limit on those types of vehicles. Okay, number three. Um, so starting after April 18th, 2023, which we're past that now. So if you buy an electric vehicle now, right, then you have to comply with these rules additionally. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details because this is very complicated, but you sh your dealer, as well as looking at the IRS website, should be able to kind of tell you if this is going to, if your car is going to qualify or not. Okay. So here's what happens after April 18th, 2023. All right. The credit amount will depend on the vehicle meeting the critical mineral sourcing and or battery component sourcing requirements. Okay. A vehicle meeting both sourcing requirements is eligible for the full credit and a vehicle meeting only one of those sourcing requirements would be only eligible for $3,750 of a credit. A vehicle that meets neither requirement is not eligible for any credit after April 18th, 2023. Additionally, the vehicle's final assembly has to occur within North America. The vehicle, the, again, the electric vehicle's final assembly has to occur within North America. North America, for those that maybe need to refresh on geography, includes the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Okay, so the final assembly has to be in one of those three countries. Um, so a lot of the vehicles are already finally assembled in those three countries, just FYI. But in case for some reason your vehicle that you're thinking about buying is not, then it's not going to qualify for the credit. So no matter when you bought the vehicle, it has to be assembly, assembled in North America. Okay. But after April 18th, it also has to have certain sourcing requirements that we talked about and battery components that we talked about for critical minerals, etc. cetera, um, in order to qualify. So again, 
your dealer should know if that vehicle qualifies. Again, there's also a website that you can go to um, that that is available that can kind of help you understand if your vehicle is going to qualify or not. Okay, there's various government websites you can go to. So be very, very careful. So moral of the story is, all right, so those are the three basic requirements in order to qualify for the credit going forward um, for 2023, okay? So moral of the story is though, you need to be very cautious about whether or not you're gonna qualify for this credit. Don't just assume you're gonna qualify for the credit. Okay, it's not like it was previously where um, as long as their manufacturer's not on a list saying that they've exceeded their number of vehicles, then you get the credit. Well, now it's actually some stuff that goes into it. So be very, very cautious and always double check what your dealer says too. I mean, don't just believe what your dealer says. I mean, obviously that's the first step is ask the dealer, does it meet the criteria for the credit? Okay, if they say yes, then ask them to prove it to you or um, go and do your own independent um, evidence on it, okay? All right, so that's that. Now, there's a backdoor approach to the credit that a lot of people don't actually think about. So if you don't wanna go buy a vehicle or you don't think if the vehicle you want is over the cap to claim it on your taxes, you can actually lease a vehicle, okay? So if you lease the vehicle, you can actually get the credit by having the lessor pass on the credit to you in terms of decreasing your lease costs on that vehicle. So the lessor can claim the commercial clean vehicle credit, okay? And then they lease it to you and, and basically pass on the cost to you, okay? So this practice works because businesses are able to take as many clean vehicle credits as they want, any as many commercial clean vehicle credits as they want. We're gonna get to that in, in a second here, okay? And, and then they can basically pass that on to you, okay? As the end user of the vehicle. So something else to consider and think about is maybe they you, you can find a lessor that's going to do that for you. OK, um, purchasing a used vehicle. So if you purchase a used vehicle, um, you can potentially get a credit if your income is below a certain threshold. So it has to be below one hundred fifty thousand dollars married, filing joint or surviving spouse, one hundred twelve thousand five hundred for head of household or 75,000 for single taxpayers and married taxpayers filing separately, okay? So if your vehicle is below that, uh, or if your income is below that for the modified adjust adjusted gross income, okay, then you can do a used electric vehicle and get a credit of up to $4,000, okay? It's up to $4,000 or 30% of the purchase price, whichever is lower, all right? Um, now, important to note that the cost of the vehicle for the used credit cannot exceed $25,000, okay? So you have to find a used electric vehicle that does not exceed $25,000. Um, and there's certain vehicles that are eligible, basically. So if you go in, there's actually a website on the IRS website where you can go and look at uh, what vehicles are eligible for the used vehicle credit, okay? But there you go. And you can get that even if the previous owner receive the $7,500 credit that we were talking about for the clean vehicle credit, okay? Now, let's talk about purchasing an electric vehicle for business use, okay? So if you purchase the electric vehicle for business use, best if it's 100% business use in this case, okay? Especially if your income is above the limits, all right? You want it to be 100% business use, okay? So if it is, then in the final assemblies in the U.S., then you can claim this credit. So there's no, important to note, there is no critical minerals or battery components rules for the commercial clean vehicle credit. So if it's for business, there are no such rules on the, the critical minerals or battery components for businesses, okay? So it just has to be fi final assembly in the United States, basically, uh, in order to claim it, okay? So in those with a gross vehicle weight rating, of less than 14,000 pounds, the credit is the lesser of 15% of the vehicle's basis or 30% if the vehicle is fully electric, okay? Or the incremental cost of the vehicle. That gets a little tricky, the calculation. We're not gonna really go into it on this um, episode, right? So what I would say is if you're trying to buy an electric vehicle for your business, 
work with your accountant or CPA or enrolled agent, whoever you're kind of using to get the, the more explicit guidance and to do a calculation for you. But basically, um, based on the type of vehicle you're buying, is 15% of the vehicle's basis or 30% if the vehicle's fully electric, okay? Or the incremental cost of the vehicle, whichever is lower. Those are the optional credits that are available to you for electric vehicles. Um, I won't bore you with like all the filing requirements and all that kind of stuff, but more of the story is, guys and gals, all right? Make sure that you're working with your accountant on this one going forward. Um, you know, you really need to understand the rules to make sure you're gonna actually qualify. I have nothing worse than buying something, thinking you're gonna get a tax credit, and having that be a part of your justification for buying it. And then you go to your tax return, and oh crap, you don't qualify for the credit. Nothing I can do at that point. Nothing anybody can do at that point. If you didn't seek the guidance and advice beforehand, it just is what it is, all right? And even if you do seek guidance or advice beforehand and something drastic changes later on in the year, like you get some new raise at work or some big um, income increase from something, it is what it is. I mean, sometimes crap happens, right? Sometimes it just happens. So anyways, Hopefully everybody enjoyed the video today on the electric vehicles. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out. Um, otherwise, we'll be back with you with some more cool topics later on. Peace.